Hello, Mark Laudy here at the IR Magazine Conference and Awards 2009 in Singapore. Many of the investor relations officers gathered here today have to deal with very important but day-to-day -day announcements financial statements, key executive appointments, uh, perhaps uh, announcements of new contracts and sometimes profit warnings. But if you're in a large company like Chartered Semiconductor, which has recently gone through a $1.8 billion uh, sale, that is the company was taken private off the Singapore and NASDAQ markets and sold to an Abu Dhabi investor, very clearly that sort of transaction requires entirely different skills and obviously the day-to-day -day affairs uh, in the office will look very different than if you're uh, just an financial statements and the investor relations officer who's been uh, dealing with that is with me now. Please tell us your name. Lim Li Chuan. And uh, what uh, exactly transpired in the office? Can you characterize, can you describe what the last couple of months looked like ever since that big announcement was made? Well, I think a lot of the work actually happened prior to the announcement from the point that the IR department was brought into the transaction. I think it was very busy from, the, from that moment trying to strategize in terms of how we communicate the rationale for the acquisition to our shareholders as well as also internally to our employees um, because you know obviously that also has a great deal of impact on them and many of them are also shareholders so we had to think in terms of how to best get the message uh, that we wanted to across um, from an employee perspective as well as a shareholder's perspective and also just uh, in the course of doing all that you know things were also very fluid the the transaction uh, the details were very fluid so we we had to be it was very hectic. We were working very hard. I, I bet you were. But tell us a little bit more about the investor relations role vis-a-vis -vis the current or the previous shareholders. Actually, why do you care about those shareholders when you're going to have a big new shareholder? You're going to be taken private. You, you could think, we'll just forget about those other shareholders for now. No, I think it's important for us to explain to the existing shareholders who have been with us, you know, some of them have been loyal as shareholders for a number of years and have seen Chartered grow over the years. And obviously, we want them to understand why this this step for Chartered is is the best one. And also, you know, obviously, we also needed their approval to get to the next level. So we we wanted to be uh, very transparent uh, and and communicate to our existing shareholders the rationale for the transaction, what it meant for them, you know, and what it means for the company as well, you know, to take it to the next next level. But ultimately, really what you were looking for is to secure that yes vote for them, uh, for the company, is that right? Well, yeah, that's clearly one of um, our goals in IR was to ensure that, you know, the reason you are trying to communicate that is so that, yes, you can get the shareholders to vote in favor of the acquisition and and we did do that you know with an overwhelming majority yes. so if you're an investor relations officer watching uh, and and you uh, watching you describe how hectic it was and how the situation was fluid things changed perhaps on a day-to-day -day or week-by-week -week basis what sort of processes did you have in place internally what sort of uh, things did you do to try to mitigate that or anticipate some of these things well I think on a transaction like this you know you, you're never fully prepared, you don't have a standard operating procedure for such a thing. But I think key to making things work was that the IR department works very closely with senior management. So we have a direct line to the CFO, the CEO. So I think the communication part was important. So we were always you know, aware of what was going on and, and we were able to respond uh, accordingly to the changes as, as the transaction you know, progressed. So I think that's one of the key uh, key things in IR is that you always have uh, a clear line of communication with your top management. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, let's end where I began, and that is with investor relations officers who, unlike you, probably going through the, the motions on an annual basis with the more routine uh, statements. Um, what words of advice or uh, key experiences would you want to share with them, having gone through these very extraordinary circumstances that you did? I think uh, the advice I would give to you know, an IR officer who's going to be faced with such challenges is to stay focused on you know, what your end result 
what your end result, yeah, what you want it to be, um, you know, and and I think you know, in, in the course of a transaction, many things happen that can kind of can be a bit, bit demoralizing sometimes. But the key is to stay focused on the outcome that you want and and to just kind of push through some of the some of those issues.